happy to be back out there, you know, with the guys and, and doing what I love and, you know, happy to have the opportunity to, to continue playing this week. Well, your how's your like your blood pressure and your teammates blood pressure with the narrow victories you have secured this year, four overtime wins, six, one goal decisions. You of course had a terrific OT winner at home against Halifax. Uh, high drama seems to be the, uh, the major ingredient for your group. Yeah, no, um, for some reason, you know, we just keep getting in these tight games, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about, you know, the end result and, fortunate for for us uh we're finding ways to get it done in, in the in the big moments and when it matters so you know hopefully we can keep that momentum going and and you know keep our foot on the gas and know that we're never out of a game and and can always uh always uh push a little harder chris i think one of the surprising aspects for me um looking at your team based on all the years of success and how many offensive players that you have um, you're not the highest scoring team right now in the NLL, but I think most people would look at your roster and think that you could always be the highest scoring team in the NLL. How would you describe how, the year that it's been collectively for the group to get to this point? Yeah, you know, you never you never make any excuses or, or want to make any excuses or anything like that. But the, the fact of the matter is we've uh, we've been pretty banged up as a, as an entire team this year, you know, with multiple guys on our offense, multiple guys on our e defense being out for extended periods of time. You know, you got a player like Josh Byrne out for a few, more than a few weeks. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, that's a big hit to any offense that he's on. And, uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, our pieces are coming together and uh, right at, just at the right time, obviously we're uh, going to be missing uh, Brandon Robinson, who's a big part of our offense. But uh, luckily for us, you know, we got guys that are able to fill that role in uh, guys like uh, Brad McCauley and, and even Ian McKay coming up to play some offense. Yeah, I think that's been probably one of the best developments, right, is guys, especially when Josh went down, uh, McCauley really stepped in right away and was able to kind of solidify what was a terrific 10 and 2 start for your team this year. Right. Yeah, and as did as did Ian McKay. Ian's they've been doing a, an unbelievable job at kind of flipping roles on on the fly. You know, all season he's been on offense, been on yeah. defense. Now he's playing a little bit of both. You know, he's doing a really good job of managing managing well managing that. He he seems to have uh, a significant social media presence. Uh, <laughs> does he? Do you enjoy that? Is that a is that a is that a group thing that everybody loves seeing what he posts? Yeah, you know he he's uh, he's got a big thing with Hasbula, and he loves he loves Hasbula, and he, he's always got like a, a super funny, you know, relevant post to uh, you know whatever that week is, and yeah. he's uh, it's just something he's been doing, and I think he's more of a routine guy, and he's just gonna keep doing it now, and uh, you know it, it brings a little bit of light into everyone's day. Well, I mentioned earlier. I mean, you had that beautiful OT winner at home against Halifax. I, I would say this though, or ask you this, do you feel like your assist on Chase Fraser's recent wow goal versus Toronto doesn't get talked about enough? I mean, I don't, I don't know about that. That assist is, uh, it wouldn't be an assist anywhere else. You know, it's a, it's a hockey assist or, or, you know, off, off the, off the post doesn't, I wouldn't really, even credit that to me. He made a, he made a great play, great read. And I don't know if he had to necessarily put it through his legs, but he's got a knack for making it a little extra flashy. And that's what we all love about phrase. Oh, come on. You gave him the perfect alley-oop and allowed him to do it. I <laughs> honestly though, I, I, can you describe after all this time, I mean, outdoor, indoor, your career has been full of huge moments when the game starts tilting like that and you again get reminded of how skilled you and your teammates are, like, what is that like, especially in bandit land? It's, it's pretty special, you know, and it, it's, it makes it a lot more fun. I don't know if you ever like look at the close-ups of our faces when someone scores, we're actually like genuinely like shocked and excited for each other. You know, it's, it's so exciting to, you know, see each other succeed and, and see each other, you know, do what we do on a, on a daily basis and, and continue to wow each other. And uh, it, it's fun to celebrate that. And it makes it a lot more, it makes it a lot more 
fun than, you know, pressure. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, it is still a job, but, you know, we all got into this because we love the game and, and it's fun. And it's meant to be fun. And, you know, that's, that definitely plays a factor into that. Yeah. I, I mean, Chris, I've been going to games since I was in single digits. Uh, my daughter's 18, uh, oldest daughter's 18. She's been going to games almost her whole life. We were sitting there almost laughing out loud at how skilled and how chaotic and how incredible that most recent game against Toronto was. It just seemed to have so much. And that and it had us thinking, like, what is it like in this moment? So thank you for putting it into that proper perspective. Um, that Toronto game, I mean, obviously after Chase's goal, you had uh, Buchanan's behind the back and, and then just that impressive fourth quarter. Um, how do you feel you guys match up now against Rochester in, in a, in a one game playoff matchup here on Saturday? Yeah. You know, uh, Rochester is a, is a unbelievable team. They had a lot of success this year. Um, you know, they got some unbelievable players. I think we match up well. I think it's going to be a really good game and, you know, that's the thing about playoff lacrosse is it doesn't really matter about your, your past anymore. It's, it's one game at a time and anyone can, you know, get the upper hand and it's all about kind of, it comes down to effort and, and less about, you know, the things you did all season. It's about right now and the effort you put out in each and every game because you let up for a second and, you know, that, that opportunity slips away. What do you, it, does it feel different every year when you, when you get into the playoffs, given all the experience? that you and this group have together? Oh, yeah, there's no there's no getting used to playoff time because, you know, everything's on the line. And it may even, uh, you know, with how many times we've uh, come up just shy in the past, you know, there's still that kind of pressure hanging over our head. It's like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be now. And we gotta figure out how, how we're gonna make it this year. And, and this year is gonna be our run. And, you know, in order to do that, we gotta take it one game at a time. And that's, that's Rochester this weekend. Absolutely. Um, practice time. What is it like for you guys? How much time do you actually get together before playing on Saturday night? Um, this week we'll, uh, we'll practice Friday night and uh, probably have a dinner Friday night and then walk through uh, Monday morning where you kind of just get our legs loose and, or sorry, Saturday morning, get our legs mm -hmm. loose and uh, uh, then game time Saturday night. Well, best of luck in bandit land. Can't wait to see it unfold and uh, we'll see you uh, very soon. Thank you for the time today, Chris. Thanks. Looking forward to it.